What up, guys? Your boy Quake back with a brand new episode of the Diverse Mentality Podcast, number 302. Powered by the one and only Golden Eagle Energy Drink. Get your Golden Eagle Energy Drinks at drinkgoldeneagle.com forward slash DMP. That's drinkgoldeneagle.com forward slash DMP. They sponsored all season four of the podcast. So please show them support for showing us support. And to the dickheads in the comments, there's like two of you guys uh, saying that I don't drink this or that I'm somebody that is pushing a product that I don't use. You guys should see the cases that I've gone through. Uh, obviously, I'm not on the podcast drinking because you don't want to hear me slurping no homo every single second. Uh, every time I do take a break to drink something, it gets cut out on the podcast, obviously. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and just drink, drink, drink every two seconds. Uh, I used to do that when, when I had a co-host. Uh, it would get cut uh, whenever somebody would take a drink because you don't usually, it's not proper, at least for me, it's not respectful to you guys to be slurping and drinking and eating food and making noises with mouths and stuff like that when you're chewing gum and, you know, just stuff like that. So uh, shout out to my video editor, Ivan. Obviously, he he does a smooth transition to where the you can't even tell that it's been cut out or anything like that. That's the way it's supposed to be. So you shouldn't be able to tell that I took a drink in between and stuff like that. Obviously, it's just me running the podcast, so my mouth is going to get dry, and I'm going to take a break in between when I go to a different story and, you know, stuff like that. So that's that's normal. Um, but, yeah, to the people that are saying that I'm pushing this and not actually drinking this, I drink energy drinks more than I drink coffee. Like 80% of the time, I'll drink energy drinks versus coffee. I'll get Dunkin' Donuts coffee, sometimes black coffee here and there. Uh, but energy drinks have always been my thing. I used to drink the original Red Bull, but Golden Eagle is tastes exactly like that, has less of the harsh chemicals, and tastes way smoother. So this is what I drink when I want the original Red Bull type of flavor is Golden Eagle Energy Drink. And then if I want like flavored uh, versions, they don't have flavored versions. They do have a uh, zero sugar one that's coming out pretty soon. So I'm going to be tasting that and seeing if it's good. I'm going to put it on here as well. And I think they have one more flavor, a red flavor, cherry that's coming out. So they don't really have a lot of flavored versions. Red Bull, I do like the Sea Blue edition, uh, the coconut I think it's coconut berry and then the new green one that they came out with some elder cauliflower whatever the hell it's called but yeah if i want like flavored energy drinks i will drink red bull i'm not gonna lie to you guys and say this is all i drink 24 7 this is the only thing i drink and if i just drank this i'd get a heart attack obviously you know it has 80 milligrams of caffeine which is the same as a regular can of red bull as any energy drink of this size has um, obviously per day you only want 400 milligrams that's the max you should be having per day of caffeine so i may be Per day, I have two of these, maybe three if I have a really hectic day. So that's what, 8, 16, 24, 240 milligrams of caffeine. Um, but that's it. And then I do a cycle where like every year I'll have a 30 days where I just drink water, uh, nothing caffeine, nothing just to kind of reset my body. That way I don't get like caffeine sensitive or uh, caffeine insensitive, I guess, where, you know, some people will, they'll always drink caffeine. And then when they have caffeine, it doesn't like affect them. It doesn't give them energy and stuff like that. And that's, that defeats the whole purpose. And cause it's cause your body's just getting used to it, you know? So, uh, yeah, to those two trollers, dickheads that were like, I don't drink it. Um, I don't know what you guys want me to do, you know, sit here and just slurp 24 second, 24 seven on this shit. Uh, yeah, I'm, j I'm jittery right now cause I just had one. So that's why I'm kind of all over the place cause I didn't have any energy drinks at all today. Uh, I've been kind of busy this morning, but yeah, uh, drink golden eagle.com forward slash DMP. Uh, you know, any company that supports me, I support them. Uh, anything that I've ever pushed sponsor wise on my main channel and here, I've always used or had or gave for someone to use. Like I, I remember I pushed uh nicotine calf, uh, nicotine gum and people were like, why are you pushing people onto nicotine? The whole purpose of that nicotine gum is to take people off of cigarettes. Uh, it's supposed to sway people off of cigarettes. And my dad is a cigarette smoker and I was, you know, helping him with that. I don't, you know, do nicotine, but that's the only time that I've ever pushed a product where like I wasn't specifically using it because I'm not a smoker. But other than that, everything else that I've ever pushed on here, I actually use. I would never uh, push a product that I don't use or that I've never like liked using or anything like that. Um, because that just, you know, that's, that's on my end immoral. I could have pushed, listen guys, if I really wanted to, I could have pushed artists, bullshit ass artists that are garbage and they were paying me thousands of dollars. I'm telling like there's artists that, that were sending me, hey, I'll give you five grand to post my song on one of your videos. $5,000 I could have easily just taken and been like, hey, 
you know, to me, that's a lot of money, man. Five grand ain't something that comes easy. Um, so, you know, I just don't, I don't compromise for, for things I don't actually use. Energy drinks, if you've ever known me in real life or anytime you've seen me on, you know, sometimes live streams, I'll have an energy drink. I've always been an energy drink fan. So this one made perfect sense uh, for me. But continuing on, let's get into the news. And then towards the end, I want to talk about Eminem's Death of Some Shady. The album review, I'm kind of going to talk about what are my favorite tracks on there, what tracks I don't like, and then what tracks am I neutral on. I'm going to take the same formula I did on Kanye West and, T- Kanye West and Ty Dolla Sign's Vultures album. Uh, the same exact formula. I'm going to do the same thing with this album. Uh, I was going to wait you know, for the Twitter spaces, but I just haven't had time to get on Twitter spaces to talk about the album. And plus, you know, first time on Twitter spaces, I don't want it just to be about an Eminem album. I want it to just us just to kick it, hang out. So uh, follow me on Twitter at QuakeGW, and whenever I get on there, I will let you guys know. Let's get into the news. Young Thug's judge gets a new judge. Young Thug's judge. Young Thug's YSL Rico trial gets a new judge. So let's go over that. Uh, Young Thug now officially has a third judge presiding over his drama-ridden YSL Rico trial. As previously reported, Judge Earl, Earl Glanville, who had been overseeing the trial since it started, was removed on Monday, July 15th. Thug's lawyer, Brian Steele, had filed a motion to dismiss Glanville from the case after he met with prosecutors and state witness Kenneth Copeland last month without the knowledge of the rapper and his legal team. He was then replaced by Judge Sakura Ingram, who then rescued herself on Wednesday, July, or not rescued, but recused herself on Wednesday, July 7th because of a romantic relationship uh, her former courthouse courthouse deputy had with co-defendant in the case. Uh, just hours later, however, Ingram was replaced by Judge Paige Reese Whittaker, who is now officially listed in court dockets as presiding over the case. So that's the new judge, Judge Paige Reese Whittaker, uh, according to the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Whittaker, who has been a judge in Fulton County since 2017, is a former Fulton County prosecutor and also worked at uh, the state attorney's general's office. Both Ingram and Whittaker were selected randomly, according to the report. Interesting. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, The trial, though, after that report, they reported that the trial will be getting back on track. Uh, They indicated that uh, she... The actual new new judge is re- is expected to return, is expected to go to the jury. I don't know why it says to return. And the jury's expected to return on August 5th. So, yeah, August 5th, it starts again. Thank God they actually found somebody and they don't have to restart this whole thing, which would have took another two to three years, like I talked about on the last podcast episode. Um, but, yeah, we'll see. We'll keep our eyes posted, and uh, hopefully this new judge you know, doesn't do any scandalous things and we get more delays, but we'll see what happens moving forward. Irv Gotti has officially responded to that sexual assault lawsuit that he got. Let's go over the article. Irv Gotti has responded to the allegations that he sexually assaulted a former partner, denying any wrongdoing. According to TMZ, a rep for the Murder, Inc. Records boss cast doubts on the allegations and claimed that the woman only filed the suit after unsuccessfully attempting to extort Gotti. Uh, the suit was filed after Mr. after Mr. Gotti rejected the attempt by this individual to coerce a payment of money from him. Uh, the lawsuit contains a single page of facts, which are unsworn to sparse by any measure, and which Mr. Gotti categorically denies. They said the allegations represent an affront to women who have truly suffered abuse. Uh, Mr. Gotti has been surrounded by strong women the entirety of his life his mother, five sisters, and daughter. The top employees at his company are women. Mr. Gotti's relationship with women, women have been char- characterized by mutual respect, um, by mutual respect, honesty, and empathy. Mr. Gotti's rep- reputation has been placed at issue. Uh, the rep added that Arab Gotti plans to fight the baseless lawsuit in court and is even considering filing his own countersuit for defamation. So... Uh, that is kind of true, though. Yo Gotti has had... Not Yo Gotti, sorry. Irv Gotti, damn Gotti's, all these Gotti's, uh, has had a life of just being surrounded by women. You know, he's raised by a bunch of women. Obviously having sisters, a lot of sisters, mother, daughters. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll keep our eyes posted. And, you know, with these type of situations, like I said, always, you know, never take a side and automatically assume one person's guilty or not uh, until there's solid proof. 
And, you know, like I said, with the Diddy thing, there's solid proof with the Cassie thing. Uh, and we're going to be talking about that a little bit later. Ice Cube kind of puts his, like, own two cents in the whole Diddy situation. And it makes no sense. But Ice Cube is being Ice Cube because he's probably dealt with a lot of different things in his life. So he's probably attaching it to, uh, you know, Diddy going through it. But uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But, yeah, uh, you know, I think if he didn't do this and, you know, there's proof that comes out he never did anything or he definitely should counter suit, man, because that is defamation. That can ruin a lot of things that Irv Gotti wants to do in his career still. Uh, you know, I, we've hor- we've heard the horror stories of, let's just say, NFL players, right, getting with a woman, the woman accusing the NFL player of, you know, sexual assault. Turn to f- Come to find out he never did that, loses his NFL career, loses his life, basically because he's locked up for a while, comes back out, can't play NFL, uh, you know, loses an opportunity to make millions and change, you know, uh, his life and his family's life for forever. But, you know, the woman doesn't get anything charged. I think if a woman accuses a man of sexual assault and there's proof that it never happened, the woman then should face some type of repercussions for that. They should get jail time. They should get, you know, something. And unfortunately, only people with money, like Irv Gotti, can counter sue and do defamation. Most people, when they get sued in these type of things, they don't have money in the first place. So it's hard to fight that, you know. And then once, you know, let's just say you end up not guilty. You end up serving four or five years in prison because, you know, you're going through the trial, all this stuff. You know, a trial is how long they fucking take. You waste two, three, four, five years of your life. Not guilty. You come out. The female is living her regular life, has to not worry about anything. You just lost three, four, five years of your life, potentially lost your career. Potentially, if you're a celebrity, you got branded as a sexual assault person. Because here's the thing. When you get, especially with celebrities, when they get accused of something, usually that news is bigger than them being found innocent years down the line, right? Um, Unless it's like a murder case or something like that, then like people know, okay, didn't kill the person, he's out. But most people, they'll know more about the lawsuit that started versus the lawsuit being done and finished and not you being accused of anything. So right now, more people know about Rugati getting sued for sexual assault than years down the line if he gets, you know, if the if he fights it and, you know, isn't found guilty of anything, most people won't look at that story because it's positive news. Unfortunately, the negative news gets out there a lot more than the positive news. But me, I've always followed up or at least tried to follow up on everything. Uh, I know there's stories that we've recovered based on season one of the podcast all the way in 2020. And we followed up three years later and been like, okay, this is the, the follow-up to that. And we're about to do one right now, actually. So, yeah, uh, I try to follow up with everything because it's fair. And I know a little Reese, aka Mr. Poopy Butthole, one of his fans uh, messaged me, shout out to uh, whoever that was, and said, you know, if you're going to report on him raping a woman, report on this information, that information. I don't know about all that, but I will report if he is found innocent. 100%. I'm not going to be an asshole and be like, oh, he's guilty and fuck him. He does scam his fans. He's a piece of shit for that. And there's no way if fans are up butts around that. I know people are saying this page is hacked, but come on, man. How long can your Twitter be hacked? That makes no sense. You're a celebrity. You can easily contact Twitter or X, whatever it's called, and get your page back. That could happen in 24 hours. Easily. Um, so that excuse is bullshit. But uh, yeah, yeah. We'll keep our eyes posted and see what happens with this Irv Gotti thing. Speaking of an old story that we reported on years ago, uh, there's a, finally an update. And this is of Slim 400, who got murdered a while ago, I believe a couple of years ago. And his killer finally got sentenced. So let's go over the article. Uh, Slim 400's killer has officially been sentenced to 32 years behind bars for the 2021 shooting death of the West Coast rapper. According to TMZ, Michael Terry's sentence was handed down in a Los Angeles courtroom on Wednesday, July 17th, after he pleaded guilty to voluntary manslaughter for killing Slim in his own driveway in December 2021. I remember seeing that video, very sad video. Um, but yeah, uh, officially sentenced, uh, Terry and the woman named Tam, Tamra Lynn Bell were arrested in June 2022 in connection to the murder Bell is slated to be sentenced in January 2025 after pleading guilty to felony accessory after the fact. The killing was captured on a nearby ring surveillance camera that shows someone walking up a driveway before encountering Slim 400, who was sitting in a car. 
The person got to the car and began firing shots, which Slim tried to dodge but couldn't. Uh, the video ends with Slim 400 on the ground crawling after the suspect. Uh, the 33-year-old rapper was taken to a nearby hospital where he succumbed to his injuries. Uh, Slim 400 also got shot like before that a few times, and he survived that. But, uh, you know, he was uh, mainly YG's artist, if I remember correctly. And he had done like a Vlad TV interview like probably like a couple of weeks before and then ended up getting killed. Uh, wild though, but uh, 32 years in prison. I think he should get a lot more time. That's kind of, you know, you got it on camera. The guy's literally hunting down, gunning the person to death. I think anybody that kills anybody, like, and it's clear as day, the person killed them should get life in prison. I That's how I feel about it. I don't think there should be no 32 years. There should be no 40 years. There should be no... Unless it was like, hey, this was an accident, right? Like, there are times where people murder, not murder, but kill someone on accident. You know, that happens. But, you know, killing somebody, blatant, blasting the guy while he's on the ground, just, nah, 32 years is ridiculous, man. Get him life behind bars. Uh, don't ever have him become free in society ever again. Uh, the woman that drove him and helped him around, now you can be a little bit more lenient on that person. Um, but other than that, yeah, 32 years, nah, man, life. Anybody that murders that horribly with no remorse, I mean, the guy just, I, I haven't seen the video in a long, long time, but the guy just didn't give two fucks about murdering him. People like that don't deserve a second chance. Those people don't have hearts. Those people don't have sympathy, empathy, whatever. They don't think normal like normal people. So uh, keep his ass locked up for life. Not 32 years, a life. Uh, but yeah, that's the update on that, man. Years later, um, finally got sentenced. Welcome to America court systems that take 30 million years for finally cases to be closed. Uh, but yeah, we'll keep our eyes posted and see if anything else happens moving forward. Soldier Boy has decided to sue, and I love this because it's the person that I don't like. This is a person that spreads fake information, and Cardi B destroyed her, and Soldier Boy might do the same thing, so we'll see. Uh, Soldier Boy has filed a multi-million dollar defamation lawsuit against blogger Tasha K. This is the same woman that spread fake information about Cardi B. Cardi B won, and she still owes Cardi B a shit ton of money. She basically spread fake information that Cardi B had a disease, and the same thing is kind of happening with Soldier Boy here. She's doing the exact same thing. She clearly did not learn her lesson with Cardi B, still spreads fake information, still interviews gossipy people that talk shit, uh, anybody that watches or supports this woman deserves to at least get slapped in the face because stupid. Why are you watching somebody that spreads fake information that just gossips? That's it. I've gone on incident, incident I've gone on insane rants about this, but I'm not going to go on it again. Uh, Soldier Boys filed a multi-million dollar lawsuit defamation against blogger Tasha K and internet personality William the Baddest. I have no idea what the fuck that is. Uh, TMZ confirmed the lawsuit on Wednesday, July 17th, revealing that Soldier Boy is gunning for a cool $16 million following an interview uh, the pair did where William alleged he'd slept with Soldier Boy. Uh, the conversation happened earlier this month with William describing uh, the tryst in detail. Soldier quickly issued a video response denying the claims and promising the lawsuit which he's now made good on. The rapper told the outlet he gave the pair a chance to avoid litigation by sending them a letter demanding a retraction at the time of the interview, but the video remained online. So once again, Tasha K learned nothing from the lawsuit of Cardi B. Uh, William even doubled down by tattooing Soldier's name on his face in purple ink. What the fuck? Uh, Soldier Boy is now suing for defamation, sexual harassment, violation of right to privacy, uh, intentional infliction of emotional distress and more. Let's watch the denial video. Actually, I'm curious to see what Soldier Boy said. Let's see. Yeah, let's see if I can play the video for you guys. Dad, they told me, do you know her personally? No, I do not know this at all, bro. I seen I got a picture with him. I'm like, what the? F so this gonna make me not want to take picture with fans no more. So you tell me if I'm outside in the club or I'm at a concert anywhere and a fan walk up to me and take a picture and after they leave they go and make up a story like what like what 
They talking about he lying and says not being curved to the left. Listen, I got OnlyFans. I got OnlyFans, bro. I have OnlyFans. Y'all gonna make me not want to take pictures with fans no more. <sighs> Y'all gonna make me not want to take pictures with fans no more, bro. Can walk up, take a picture, and make. Come on, bro. She talking about I'm impressed. Yeah, go go subscribe to my OnlyFans. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Cloud Demons is crazy. Like, what the? F you gonna make up a lie on somebody for Cloud like this and, and, and what? Clicks, views, like, this shit is not cool. And I'm defending this shit with a pink shirt on, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> ah, defending this shit with a pink shirt on, chat. Y'all got me fed up. This timing is crazy. Hey, look, though, but subscribe to my OnlyFans. Lawsuit's going out. You, Tasha K, you got me fed up, bitch. Zone one murder game. Westside, hell no, y'all got me fed up. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no, she said real men wear pink. That's what I'm saying. Come on, man. God damn. Hey, keep it real, though, chat. Keep it real. Ain't this fed up? This fed up ain't. Somebody get on the internet lying about you like that. How would y'all feel, bro? How would y'all feel if truly deep down in y'all heart, bro? Y'all was not gay, bro. And you, if somebody got on the internet calling you gay, bro, what the f***? Oh, they said she was joking. Nah, that ain't no joke. It's a joke. Man, send me the interview, man. I ain't even watched the whole shit. I just seen an interview with Tasha. Yo, Tasha K, you gotta, you gotta chill. You getting sued, though. Ain't no, that's not no joke. Cause I would be ready to fight. See? What you mean? Like what? Come on, bro. I don't play like that, bro. They say you need to stop crashing out. Okay, listen. All right, chat. I'm not crashing out right now. I'm just addressing what's going on. There you go. I I agree with Soldier Boy. I backed up 100%. Sue the living shit out of her. Clearly, she has not learned her lesson, man. This is a person who just thrives off negativity, who thrives off of gossipy shit. I don't know, man. I don't know how you can bring random people. Like, if I were just to bring a random person here with no photos, no proof, even if they had photos of proof, I would never entertain it because I just don't give a shit about what you do in your private life in bed. I don't care if you you do the the, the weirdest, gayest stuff that's all on you, man. That's your personal life. I could care less. I don't care about that gossipy stuff. I just am talking about this story because I like that Tasha K is getting sued. Thank God. Hopefully she keeps getting sued because she should not, she should not even have an audience. Let me see. Like, what is her subscribers? Probably skyrocketed after the lawsuit. Because that just, huh, it accidentally typed in trash. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's actually a funny uh, name. Let's see. Does she have a certain channel? She's got 1.25 million subscribers. Like, who is watching this bullshit? Can I meet these individuals that watch this trash? I would love to interview a person that actually watches this bullshit. Genuinely. Uh, because you have to have no brain cells to watch this shit. But, um... Yeah, we'll keep our eyes posted. Hopefully, Soldier Boy wins. Uh, I would love that. I would report on it. Hell, if I could bring Soldier Boy here to talk about it, I would love that as well. Uh, but yeah, we'll keep our eyes posted. Dame Dash is doing something interesting. Uh, let's go over the article. Dame Dash seems to be offering up his interest in Jay-Z's debut album. Reasonable doubt. Despite a 2022 court ruling, which we reported on back then, uh, the embattled Rockefeller Records co-founder took to Instagram on Friday, July 19th and posted a photo of Jay's first album, Reasonable Doubt, alongside a promo photo of the duo alongside the label's third founder, Kareem Biggs Burke. Uh, in the post, Dame wrote, This shit is for sale, one-third, only real uh, inquiries only. So if you guys don't know what's going on, basically Dame Dash owns a third of Jay-Z's uh, Reasonable Doubt album. Because of Rockefeller back when they were, you know, all cool with Biggs, Jay, Dame. Um, but let's go over more of the article. The 2022 court ruling said that Dash was prohibited from selling any part of Jay-Z's classic debut without permission from Rockefeller. By the way, I didn't say Jay-Z had a classic debut. That is just in the article. 
don't mix my words for what this article says. Uh, but he was allowed to sell his one third um, stake in the overall business. So he can sell his overall stake in the business, but he can't sell specific portions uh, in his ownership stuff. Uh, the ruling read as between the parties, RAF Inc. Uh, Rockefeller Records owns all rights to the album, Reasonable Doubt, including its copyright. And this judgment shall prohibit the altering in any way, sale, assignment, pledging, encumbering, contracting with, to regard to, or in any way disposing of RAF Inc.'s property interest and reasonable doubt, including its copyright, including thorough, uh, including through any means such as auctioning a non-fungible token, reflecting, referring, or directing to such interest. Uh, all bunch of lawyer words. Basically, you can't sell that fucking portion, Dame Dash, but Dame Dash doesn't give a fuck. So it's interesting that he just went, about doing it on Instagram out of all places. But we'll see. We'll see if he actually gets a buyer, which I don't know who said it, but someone said Drake should buy it just because he's he's buying up a lot of part of the culture. He's buying a lot of things that are part of the culture. I don't know who it was. Somebody said Drake should buy it. Lupe Fiasco. <laughs> which, by the way, Lupe Fiasco went on Twitter spaces and basically said, um, why did Kendrick attack Drake for not being part of the culture? Uh, because, you know, Drake has been more part of it. He's done more tours, dropped more hits, been more active in the culture. Basically, Lupe doesn't like Kendrick. I mean, it's clear as day. I think in Lupe's mind, and I agree, I think that I, I'm, I'm on Lupe's side. I think more people should have... Basically, Lupe is Kendrick before Kendrick. So Kendrick is Lupe, basically. Because um, Lupe was doing music, same type of music that Kendrick's doing. But I think at a even better level, in my in my opinion, I think Lupe is a better better rapper than Kendrick Lamar. I'm willing to put my dollar on Lupe Fiasco if they ever went at it. That's just my my thing. And Lupe can write hits, so let's not get it twisted. Of Kendrick got hits, you know, it just Kendrick reached a higher level than Lupe because Lupe was dealing with a lot of issues when it comes to uh, labels. Let's see, actually, let's see what what the sales were like of. Of let's see what where where Lupe's um stuff charted Lupe Fiasco chart history and I want to see Lupe Fiasco's um streaming Lupe Fiasco streaming um history let's see um song wise right he still gets about so touch the sky the show goes on touch the sky is a recent track I think so that doesn't really count. But the show goes on, if you are what you say you are, a superstar, 100,000 streams daily on those songs. Uh, Battle Scars, 70,000. Let's see what albums, what's getting streams. Lasers gets 121,000. The Cool gets 141. Yeah, Kendrick's doing a lot more, especially now because of the, the battle that went on. But uh, let's see what the chart history is. So Lupe's never had a number one hit. Uh, superstar reached number 10. The show goes on, reach number nine as his highest charting songs. Um, obviously, Kendrick, yeah, Kendrick reached a different level, but I think Lupe is just a better overall artist. Um, that's just my take on it. I don't know. Uh, that's other people feel a different way. Other people might say that, hey, Kendrick's better as he's reached a higher peak, whatever. Why? How did I get into all this? Um, I have no idea. I totally forgot my train of thought, but yeah. Um, they said, oh yeah, because Reasonable Doubt, Drake being part of the culture. I think Drake buying it would be really cool. That'd be interesting. Uh, I know 50 hung out with Drake this past, like yesterday or the other day before. Uh, he's performing in Canada, hung out with Drake. Some people got pissed off at 50 for hanging out with Drake. Makes no sense. 50 has nothing to do with the beef. Uh, obviously, Drake was dissing Rick Ross. 50 hates Rick Ross. 50 actually trolled Rick Ross on stage in Toronto. So I don't really see what the what the issue is is with that if i can find the clip let me see he was trolling rick ross in toronto you're making me feel so at home Because, because some of y'all, some of y'all, I, I kicked Rick ass. 
kick the gross ass, right? So I want to thank you again for making me feel so at home. Yeah, so 50 was having fun with the fact that, uh, you know, Ross got punched in the face in Canada. So 50's having a ball with that. And then he went to go hang out with Drake. And, you know, they, they have now a common enemy when it comes to Rick Ross. So, of course, 50 is going to gravitate towards that. I don't think it's got anything to do with Kendrick Lamar. I don't think he cares. Uh, him and Kendrick, 50 and Kendrick have been close for ages. 50 just hung out with TDE like a couple of weeks ago. So 50's like stance in this isn't either side. You know, I know people want to believe that and say, oh, 50 reacted more to the Drake songs than the Kendrick songs or this and that. You know, 50 worked with Kendrick Lamar in acting and power. 50's done songs with Kendrick Lamar. Well, not songs, but one song with We Up back in 2012. 50's been doing actually more stuff with Kendrick than he's ever done with Drake. So to think that, you know, he's taken a side or this and that, he just has a common enemy with Rick Ross. That's why 50's gravitated a little bit more towards the, you know, Drake thing. That's really it. Because 50 hates Rick Ross's guts and Ross hates 50's guts. So, you know, uh, that's it with that. But yeah, uh, yeah, we'll keep our eyes posted. See what Dame Dash does if he actually gets a sale on Instagram. Before we continue, I want to give a shout out to Golden Eagle for sponsoring this podcast. Yes, if it wasn't for Golden Eagle, this podcast wouldn't be possible. If you're looking for an energy drink that doesn't tear a hole in your pocket, Golden Eagle Energy Drink is is the one you want to get. Golden Eagle has the smoothest taste with no aftertaste. You don't get acid reflex when you drink it, and you will save a lot of money. So check out Golden Eagle at drinkgoldeneagle.com forward slash DMP. The link is in the description below. And how do you think this podcast would be possible without me having energy to do it? Come on, guys. You guys got to remember this. I need energy to do this stuff, man, because there's a lot of crazy topics. So look, look, how, look, how, look how smooth this thing sounds. Look at it. Oh, my God. It's fresh. Look at that golden eagle. Look at the can. It's so beautiful, too, man. Look at that. It's so fresh, man. So fresh. Golden Eagle energy drink. Go to the link description below. That's drinkgoldeneagle.com forward slash DMP. Let's continue the episode. Ice Cube uh, recently stopped by. Patrick Bet David's podcast, the PDB, P, P, PBD podcast, and talked about Diddy. And I can't play the podcast clip because I'm sure it's copyrighted, but it's interesting what he said. So let's go over the article. Ice Cube has suggested that there is a conspiracy targeting Diddy and that the sexual assault allegations against him are part of the plan to destroy the bad boy boss. Here we go. I love Ice Cube, but man, this is so insane considering the fact that there's hotel video footage that came out of him beating the dog shit out of Cassie. Like, and there's stories, by the way, there were stories years ago of Diddy doing this stuff. We're talking from the 90s till now. And yet there's still a conspiracy, there's a conspiracy theory somewhere. Come on, guys. Uh, I was just, I don't know, but let's, let's see what uh, Cube had to say. Cube started out by saying, how could you be surprised with anything that happens in hip-hop? Hip-hop is the Wild West, so you're going to have the good, you're going to have the bad, you're going to have the ugly. He went on to cast doubt on his alleged victim's claims, saying, I believe he's being targeted. I believe somebody has the power to pull the trigger to make this stuff just a domino effect happen. The rapper and then actor appear to walk back some of his comments. I don't know enough to, to even be able to be specific on any of this stuff. It's just all speculation. I just know he was cool up until the point, up until a point, and then this stuff started happening. So I believe somebody said like, yeah, yo, he's our new guy. We on uh, to this year or whatever. Cube, Cube also said that he had never attended any of Diddy's parties and lost contact with him and really stopped dealing with Puffy around 94. However, he also acknowledged that Diddy and some of the bad boy producers contributed to the 2000 album War and Peace, Volume 2, uh, the Peace disc describing the experience as cool. He gave us great music. We flew out to New York, and I was mainly in the studio and his stable of producers. I think we did some great music. What makes no sense in this is that, like, like, let me watch the interview clip, and if I can, I'm, I actually, I won't be able to play. I just know I won't be able to, but let me, I'm going to watch the interview clip because I didn't watch the interview clip. Yeah, after watching the clip, he didn't, you know, didn't really, you know, the 
Patrick should have said, hey, how is the speculation when, you know, the Cassie video is out of Diddy putting his hands on her? You know, she put that in lawsuit. So that takes away the speculation in terms of Cassie's lawsuit. Everything else, I guess you could say, hey, you know, they pulled the, the, they pulled the trigger and decided to destroy Diddy, his whole image, because the domino effect of a bunch of lawsuits coming back to back to back to back. Obviously, there's something going on, but hey, it could have just been, hey, Cassie's the brave enough person to go. Everybody else followed suit, and it's really that simple. I think some things, you know, if, if there was no solid proof, then you could say, okay, there might be speculation that they did this and that, but it's been years and years of Diddy getting accused of things, and, you know, people have always speculated Diddy's done this and that and ordered the hit on Tupac's life, and got Biggie killed because Biggie wanted to leave the bad boy records. The Shine shooting, he was the actual, actually the one that shot instead of Shine. Shine took the fall. Lots of stuff, right? There's been years and years of stuff that people have accused. Diddy killing his uh, ex-wife, Kim Porter, whatever. There's been a lot of alleged situations and stories. Um, so I think it was kind of irresponsible for Ice Cube to kind of say it that way, but he also said, hey, I'm not really informed in the situation. I'm just kind of speculating. But, yeah, that's his take on it. I disagree. I think he should have, if he got asked about the situation, he should have uh, spoke more from an informed, you know, uh, point of view. and Or at least Patrick should have mentioned, hey, Cassie actually got beat on video. So there's no really speculation on that end. Uh, but, hey, that's how some interviews happen sometimes. It is what it is. You can't always have it go perfect. But, yeah, we'll see if anything else uh, comes out of this. Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg did... Um, a performance overseas in London and they got interviewed by Capital Extra and they told a very funny just cool story so let's go over the article Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg have been friends and collaborators for many years and on top of that on top of spawning major hits their friendship also spawned some hilarious moments uh, the Los Angeles natives were out in London this week for the launch of their gin and juice uh, cocktail line and stopped by Capital Extra on Friday July 19th to look back on the journey that got them there. By the way, Eminem was also in London doing the pop-up uh, like fan kind of event for the death of Slim Shady. So that was cool. Eminem also you know, performed Houdini with Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg where they performed. But this story is very interesting. So I'm going to play the interview clip and hope it doesn't get copyrighted. But uh, they talk about how they got set up on a blind date and ended up leading to one of the best tracks. Uh, that they made. You two have been friends, uh, colleagues, partners for a very long time. Have you got a standout moment from your friendship? I'm gonna ask you first, Ray. I'll tell you this one story. We decided to go on this blind date one night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell it. And this is before FaceTime and pagers and all of that. So we decided to go on this date and for some reason when we got there, this girl opened the door, she was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was mine, and it wasn't. <laughs> and Snoop pushed me out the way like, nah, cuz, that's me. <laughs> when I uh, turned that corner and saw mine, I was really disappointed. <laughs> and we drove for like an hour and like Hurricane <laughs> Katrina to get there. <laughs> and I was extremely disappointed, but the good part about that is when we left, that situation, the next day we went to the studio and made nothing but a G thing. Yeah. Wow. So it worked out. It worked out. It worked out very well. Ain't nothing but a G thing, baby. So shout out to that blind date moment, man. That's kind of crazy. Uh, Snoop Dogg, <laughs> of course, Snoop Dogg would set up a situation like that where Dre gets the the worst half of the blind date. Uh, I've had that happen a few times. Well, not a few times, actually twice, I think, where kind of just go out friend has this other friend and it's not the best uh the best friend let's just say that out of the two um I never usually I, I'm not I'm not gonna take one for the boys I'm not taking the hit I'm sorry I just can't do it man I'm not one of those wingmen that do that um if I don't like the girl I just don't like her man and I ain't gonna swing you know and pretend like hey I actually like her just so my friend could be cool with the girl that he's actually with nah I'm good on that but uh, at least it led to something cool, man. Uh, nothing but a G-Thang classic record uh, till this day. And we're scheduled to get the Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg album. I forget what it was called. But we're scheduled to get that, I think, Missionary, I think it was called. Uh, we're probably going to get that this year, man, because they're promoting their gin and juice out there. They're doing the interviews. They're performing. So 
any time now since Eminem released his album. I'm sure Dr. and Stoop Dog are going to release theirs. And then in the fantasy world that I live in, I'm hoping 50 Cent releases album, but that's probably not going to happen. Uh, but yeah, we'll keep our eyes posted and see if anything new comes out with Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. Finally, we are at the Eminem Death of Slim Shady album review. I know I was supposed to review this a little bit earlier, but I wanted to do it on Twitter Spaces, just didn't have time. So I decided, hey, let's do it on the podcast like we normally do. Let's go over the album, my live reaction, and my thoughts on tracks really hasn't changed from then. Uh, a few tracks here and there, I kind of switched around, but... For the most part, um, you know, I had the same type of opinion, the same thing as I had as like when I was on live on YouTube listening to the album. So let's go over it. Uh, same formula as the Kanye West and Ty Dolla Sign Vultures review where I have the good tracks section, the neutral, and then the bad tracks. Good tracks is obviously the tracks that have replay value I like. Neutral is just tracks that I don't really have much feeling for. Like it's just, they're not really bad tracks, but they're not really tracks that you know, are good that I really listen to often. It's like one of those tracks that you listen to one time that you think, okay, it's cool, but I don't think I'll ever go back to it again. Those type of tracks. And then you got just bad tracks that I think are just horrible that I'm not really a fan of that I won't ever go back and listen to. Uh, so let's get over. Let's let's see what, what, what uh, you know, what it is with all of them. Um, the, let's start with the good tracks, right? Intro track, Renaissance, uh, great start to the album. It reminds me of M Music to be Murdered by, where he started out. Recently, I think, or I don't know if Eminem has really done this his whole career, but he started out, no, he hasn't really been doing this whole career. I think he started it Kamikaze, where he just has this like first killer intro track where he's just spazzing. Uh, I love the Music to be Murdered by premonition track. They said on my last album, I sounded bitter. No, I sound like a spitter who sound like a whatever. Uh, that was fire. He kind of did the same thing on this album uh, with Renaissance. Great start uh, at the end. I loved how he talked about these guys aren't fans. They're just haters. You know, uh, Kendrick shit don't got any hits. Whatever. He says all these artists tracks, you know, I can't bump my delete later. J. Cole, blah, blah, blah. You guys would have issues with 36 Chambers. That was fire. Great execution. Great intro to the album. I also loved Habits. Uh, White Gold kills the hook. Great track, great production, uh, classic uh, Eminem, some shady. Brand New Dance is another track that I found hilarious. Uh, production reminded me of Encore, and the track, in the track, he actually says it was recorded then. Not recorded, but, you know, it was created then, but then Christopher Reeves, uh, the guy who used to play Superman, but then ended up being a quadriplegic because he got into a horse accident or something like that, if I remember correctly. You know, he would troll Christopher Reeves because his name would rhyme with a bunch of things. But when he died, he basically took the track off and now he brought it back. And he says that in the actual um, song. Uh, great, funny track. I remember listening to it live. I was laughing my ass off. Love that track. Evil, a classic Eminem. Reminds me of Relapse, a horror style, um, you know, track. The hook is amazing. Eminem does this thing. That's a classic Eminem type hook. Uh, Lucifer is another track that I loved. Uh, another horror track that I really love. Reminds me of Relapse, and I love Relapse. It's Eminem's best album to me. I just love that album. Um, I like the beat changes on Lucifer throughout the track, and Eminem flows on all that really well. Um, and then Sly Piper, I think is the person's name, kills the hook, so uh, shout out to that person. Fuel, another track that's amazing. G.I.D. kills it. Uh, you could argue damn near beats Eminem on the track. I don't know. That's that's up for discussion. But Eminem does his thing. The Diddy bars are hilarious. Um, and I love, you know, the fact that he went in, in on Diddy. Uh, Houdini, love this song as a single. Love the song, just period. Classic Shady. Uh, guess who's back? Back again. Shady's back. Yeah, so uh, great record of video. Made me love the track even more. Uh, I remember React to it live. Amazing video as well. Guilty Conscious 2, great follow-up to the original Guilty Conscious. I thought that Dr. Dre would be on this track, but he wasn't. So uh, this follow-up is still just as good. It's Marshall going against Slim Shady and battling each other out. I love the ending where he wakes up and is like, what the hell just happened? Uh, Temporary, another track I love. Um, another track where he kind of just has this, you know, Eminem's always had this theme that he talks about, his daughter Haley. And, you know, he's talking basically in this track from the afterlife. Same thing he did with the Jelly Roll, Somebody Saved Me track. And Skylar, Skylar uh, Gray 
kills the fucking hook as usual. She is a hook monster. I can see why Eminem always works with her. Uh, great song, great life type of concept record. Uh, bad one, another great track. Production's insane. Eminem kills every verse. Uh, White Gold uh, kills the hook as usual. And then Somebody Save Me, Jelly Roll kills the hook. Eminem production on point. Eminem pulls at the heartstrings, especially on this track for me. Um, so those are the great tracks on the album. That's 11 good tracks that I enjoyed that I've always, when I've when I've listened to this album this past week, week and a half, whatever you want to call it, how many days, those are the tracks that I went back on. So Renaissance, Habits, Brand New Dance, Evil, Lucifer, Fuel, Houdini, Guilty Conscious 2, Temporary, Bad One, and Somebody Save Me. So 11 great, good tracks off the album. Let's get into the neutral tracks, and then we'll talk about the bad tracks. Neutral tracks, these are basically skits. I know Trouble is kind of like a mini track, but it's a skit. Trouble, all you got breaking news. These are skits, so I don't really count them, so I'm not counting those. Uh, Antichrist, not really a fan of the hook. Uh, I like the Slim Shady voice in there that Eminem uses. The Diddy bars are hilarious, but I never really find myself going back to this track often. Uh, Toby, not a fan of Big Sean. I've always said that. Never been a fan of Big Sean. Don't like the music video. Constant movement in the music video. Uh, no disrespect to uh, Cole Bennett, but the video just didn't do it for me on the track. Um, I like the hook, and I think Baby Tron did his part as well as Eminem. They both did their part, so... That's why it's kind of neutral. I have things that I really dislike about the track, and then I like things that I like. But I don't really find myself going back to this track often like that. So Toby, I'm not a fan of. Like My Shit, uh, not a bad track. Uh, just Eminem kind of doing his flexing thing where he just trolls and talks about money and, you know, I'm the best of this. And, you know, it's kind of like an ego type of track that Eminem usually has. Uh, the reason why I didn't put it on the bad side is because Eminem made a smart move in adding it as a bonus track. This is a song that was a bonus cut. If you uh, ordered the album online on Eminem.com, they gave you that as well as another track with uh, uh, two chains called Kyrie and Luca. But this track is neutral. Uh, you know, didn't really love it, didn't really hate it. Perfect, perfect that Eminem put it as a bonus track because if you were to put this on the album, I would have put it as a bad track. But because it's as a bonus cut, I give it as a neutral. Um, so three, so 11 good tracks. Four neutral tracks, and there are three bad tracks. These are tracks that I will never go back to. I just, I'm not a fan of. I could care less about them. Uh, Road Rage. Nothing really intrigues me about the track. I like that he talked about um, that we need to shame people. Again, bad health habits, stuff like that. That was a cool topic, and, you know, just, I just didn't like the track, though. Never really went back to it. Never really cared for it. Don't like the hook, production. Don't really care to listen to it. Head Honcho. Not a fan of this track. I only like the hook. Easy Mail did his thing. But other than that, I'm not really a, you know, the, the production's all right. Easy Mail did all right. Eminem did all right. Not a fan of it. Never really went back to it. Yeah. Uh, Kyrie and Luca with 2 chains. Not a good combination with the boom bap old school type of style with 2 chains getting on there and Eminem. Did not like it. Served as a bonus track. Good idea on Eminem's part for putting it as a bonus track and not on the actual album. Didn't like the track, never went back to it, uh, but that's it. So 11 good tracks, three bad tracks, four neutral tracks. I did not count the skits, obviously. So out of that, I give it a 7.5 out of 10. Great rating. That is a, what, a C plus or a C um, out of an A, whatever. Usually if I put things in the, so it's in the, it's in the good tier album. Uh, my, my ratings are anything five and below is bad. Anything six and seven uh, in between there is good. Anything eight and nine is great. And then obviously 10 out of 10 is classic. So this is a good album. It's not a great album. It's not a classic album. It's not a bad album. It's just a good album. I think Eminem did his thing. I think the theory of, you know, the whole album being flipped and that actually Eminem, I mean, actually uh, Slim Shady killed Marshall might be a deluxe version of the album. I know somebody on TikTok explained that he used very specific sounds from each album uh, that he's released in his career and his past on this album, which I can hear, which I appreciated. But, you know, it's a good album. It's not anything that I was like, oh my God, Eminem did this insane thing. I did like the rollout of the album. I think he put a lot of great effort into it. 
The Houdini music video is really good. Uh, the Toby was all right. But, you know, uh, I think, you know, there's a lot of people on the spectrum when it comes to this album. Some people really, really hate it and think it's one of the worst Eminem albums. And some people really, really love it. I fall in between where I'm not really, you know, I, I'm, I fall more on the I love it part, obviously, with it being a 7.5 out of 10. If I was in between, I'd probably give it a 5 out of 10, obviously, because of the rating. But I think it's a good album, man. I think out of all these years, Eminem still can deliver good to great music because there are songs on here that are really great that I love. And that's all you can ask for, man. The guys, Eminem has been the most consistent artist ever in hip-hop. Now, what I mean, what, what I mean by that, right? You're going to say, oh, Nas, oh, this, all this artist, Snoop Dogg's been dropping albums, right? I'm talking consistent and relevant musically still because we're going to be talking about album sales after this and how he debuted at number one with almost selling 300,000 copies the first week. Nas ain't doing that. Nas ain't debuting at number two on the Billboard Hot 100 with a single. You know, all respect to Nas, but he isn't, that relevant when he drops these albums. Yeah, people listen to him, people love them, all that stuff. But in terms of sales and still impacting pop culture and still Eminem still has that. And Eminem is the only one doing that after all these years. Uh, you could say Jay-Z, but Jay-Z hasn't dropped a solo album since 2017. That's in three more years, that's a 10-year gap. Eminem hasn't taken a 10-year gap ever in his career. Ever. Even when he was on drugs. The hiatus from Encore to Relapse, that was a, what, 2004, 2009, five-year hiatus? Six, maybe you could throw in an extra year because of the dates and stuff. That's it. Uh, Jay-Z's on a, what, 2017, 2024? That's a seven-year, you know, you could count, people are going to count, oh, Jay-Z and Beyonce dropped their collab album the next year, whatever. I'm not counting that. I'm talking solo Jay-Z, just him. But Jay-Z drops verses here and there. But Jay-Z's the only one that I could see, like, matching Eminem in terms of Still impacting the culture if he drops an album. People still rocking with it. We have, we have yet to see with Drake if he's going to maintain that. He's on a 16-year run right now. Eminem's obviously been out for a lot longer. So Eminem's on a 24, 25-year run actually right now. 25 years and still impacting the culture. So round of applause to Eminem, man. I don't care what you think about the album. I don't care if you dislike it, hate it. The reality of the situation is he's still moving units, still charting, still doing his thing. 25 years later, he's the only hip-hop artist doing that right now. So, salute to him. Enjoyed the album. 7.5 out of 10 for me. That's my uh, thoughts on it. Let's get into the album sales like I was talking about. Actually, let's first get into new music, and then we'll talk about album sales. Uh, new music, Childish Gambino dropped Bando, Stone, and the New World. The album, Big Sean dropped the single, Yes. Rich the Kid dropped Life's a Gamble, the album. Uh, Denzel Curry dropped King of the Mischievous Soul, version 2 album. Uh, Logic dropped the song Mission Control. Rob 49 and Cardi B dropped On That Money. Um, Black or Blasted, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Always Come Find You, the album came out. Uh, and G Herbo and Skillet Baby dropped Shoot. So that's it for new music. Album sales, Eminem finally dethroned Taylor Swift, who drops 20 versions of her album, which is ridiculous. Uh, that's why she's still selling like crazy, because now it's gotten really out of hand. But he debuted at number one with the death of Slim Shady, selling 287,000 copies. First week. I don't know who got the projections. I think it was Zach. So, Zach, you got that mad wrong. The projections he thought was like 170,000, but, you know, did almost 300,000 first week. Great numbers for Eminem. 25 years later, still debuting at number one, still moving units. Shout out to Eminem. Uh, number two, Enfine Romance Untold debuted at, Number two with 124,000. Zach Bryan, The Great American Scene. Number three with 89,000. Taylor Swift, the, the, tortured, the Tortured Poets Department. At number four with 83,000. Morgan Wallen, One Thing at a Time. Number five with 65,000. Billie Eilish, number six. Hit Me Hard and Soft with 55,000. Chappelle Rowan, The Rise and Fall of Midwest Princess. Number seven with 53,000. Clariol Charm, debuted at number eight with 44,000. Uh, Megan Mo. Mulroney, Am I Okay, debuted at number 9 with 44,000. Noah Khan, Stick Season, number 10 with uh, 39,000. Going down the list, S SZA, SOS, number 14 with 30,000. Future Metro Boomer, We Don't Trust You, number 17 with 28,000. Let's see. Kendrick Lamar, Damn, number 32 with 18,000. 
Uh, Gunna, 101, number 42 with 17,000. Travis Scott, Utopia, number 43 with 17,000. Kendrick Lamar, Good Kid, Man City, number 44 with 17,000. And that's it for the album sales. And that's it for today's episode of the Diverse Mentality Podcast. As always, appreciate you guys. Support uh, Golden Eagle Energy Drink for sponsoring this podcast. DrinkGoldenEagle.com forward slash DMP. Support them for supporting us. I'd really appreciate it. Spotify, Deezer, Pocket Cast, YouTube, all that. Have an amazing night, day, whenever you listen to this, and peace.